So there's some new analysis that was released on Thursday, and it says that the global mean temperatures in July 2016 were the warmest on record for any month, dating all the way back to 1979. It was the C Copernicus Climate Change Service that released this information, and they're saying the global average July temperature was nearly a fifth of a degree Celsius higher than previous July temperature records set in 2015 and 2009. Now, some of the warmest parts of North America, let's go through a few of these. How about South Central United States? So that includes Texas, uh, Northern Mexico also. Globally, though, Western Russia and the Southern Ocean were some of the warmest spots. Now, each of the last 12 months has been the warmest on record for their respective months. And the report says that this is due to a combination of regular global climate variability and, of course, some human activity. Sudan's Ministry of Water Resources, Irrigation and Electricity has urged citizens in the Nile areas in Khartoum, Naral Nil and northern states to seek higher ground due to rising levels of the Nile River. The rain caused the river's banks to bust and the water levels reached our necks. We just managed to save our children and get them out of water. The worst affected state is Kasala State in the country's east. Organizations and government provided assistance, but it's much less than needed. Now we need shelter and food supplies. For the health situation so far, there has not been any sign of disease. The floods have cut off major roads connecting villages to the city of Kasala. This has led to severe food shortage. Humanitarian agencies are finding it difficult to deliver necessary medical and food supplies to the affected areas. Catherine Omwando, CCTV. Thousands of people have been forced to flee their homes in the south of France because of the worst forest fires there in almost 20 years. A number of houses have already been destroyed. Firefighters have stepped up their efforts to protect the city of Marseille with strong winds fanning the flames, as Danny Sinha reports. These are the frightening fires on the edge of France's second biggest city. People's homes here have been burnt to the ground and thousands have been forced to seek refuge elsewhere. Officials say they're the worst fires they've dealt with in almost two decades. Firefighting airplanes from other parts of France and neighbouring Italy have been drafted in to help them. Hilly areas towards the east of Marseille are being destroyed. The flames are being whipped up by the strong winds known as the Mistral. Flights have been delayed and cancelled at the city's airport and many roads have been made impassable. It's hard to see here, but firefighters say they are winning this battle. Police say they've arrested a 50-year-old man taking pictures of the fires, but it's too early to know if they were started deliberately. This part of the Mediterranean coast is almost unrecognisable, and with holiday season in full swing, firefighters are working round the clock to get the situation under control. Danny Sinha, 5 News.
J'ai vu les fumées et automatiquement, puis j'ai des amis qui sont pompiers et je les ai appelés pour savoir ce qui se passait. Ils nous ont expliqué, puis en plus les routes étaient barrées, donc on a très bien compris que. Et puis on sait ce que c'est que le feu, hein. on débroussaille tous les ans pour se mettre en sécurité, donc on comprend. J'ai arrosé toute la nuit, alors que j'aurais dû partir, fermer la maison et partir. Non, j'ai préféré rester. J'ai préféré rester pour sauver ma maison et sauver le voisin en arrosant. On a éteint tout ce qu'on pouvait éteindre, toutes les flamèches tout autour, avec euh, les tuyaux qui n'avaient pas brûlé, avec euh, tout ce qui était un peu disponible. Quoi. Et, et bon, on a passé la nuit comme ça, à éteindre et tout, les, tout ce qu'on a pu éteindre. Tout ce qu'on a pu éteindre. Firefighters in Portugal are battling hundreds of forest fires across the country. And one of the worst hit areas is the island of Madeira, where more than 400 people have been evacuated from their homes. Authorities say high temperatures and a dry summer are to blame. Three people have died in wildfires in the Portuguese island of Madeira. Fires which broke out earlier in the week have been fueled by hot weather and strong winds, forcing over a thousand people to flee. Our reporter Sarah Hajabajeri has been following events, and these are very dramatic pictures, Sarah, and they're causing widespread devastation. Yeah, absolutely. It's now the third day of these fires. It's peak season for wildfires in Portugal, but of course, it's also peak season for holidaymakers. A lot of British holidaymakers are, cu are currently on the island. It's on the northwest coast of Africa. It's a Portuguese island, very popular with holidaymakers from across Europe. Um, we believe the fire started in one of the wooded areas on the island. Um, there's reports that it might have been a deliberate start, and that basically over the past three days, the authorities she haven't been able to get on top of it because of unusually um, high winds. Now, that, those winds have both stoked the flames, but also meant that a lot of planes haven't been able to take off or land on the island. So there's been quite a lot of disruption to tourism in, in the area. Um, three people have lost their lives. They are local residents, as we understand, um, uh, one of whom was quite elderly. Um, and there are 174 people who are in hospital at the moment, um, mainly due to smoke inhalation issues. Um, a thousand people, though, have been evacuated, mostly um, those are local residents, but some tourists have been caught up in it. We've been speaking to them today. Um, and just in terms of tourism, obviously, those pictures look dreadful. If you're there, it's a concern and you're a tourist, but if you're planning to go there, of course, August peak season, as you mentioned, what's the advice? Well, a lot of tour operators are acting as normal. We're hoping that it's all going to calm down. The weather is improving today. Um, it's cooling down. Um, so the flames are starting to go out. So we're hoping within the next 12 hours, things should return to normal on Madeira. OK, Sara, thank you. This is what every homeowner's worst nightmare looks like. A blazing inferno sweeping across the landscape and burning everything in its path. Here, on the outskirts of Funchal, the capital of Madeira, residents have little choice but to leave. More than 400 people have been evacuated from homes and a hospital. Six houses have already been destroyed. Firefighters are desperately trying to extinguish the flames, but the island's steep hills and thick woodland have made the task much more difficult. Elsewhere on the Portuguese mainland, wildfires have been raging for several days. In Agueda, 
Almost 300 kilometers north of the capital, Lisbon, power lines have been cut and roads closed. The fires are raging across several fronts. They're still not under control. One of the fires is burning very close to a village, so we're worried about what could happen. A lethal combination of strong winds and high temperatures has caused the flames to spread quickly. It could be some time yet before firefighters get the upper hand. Emergency workers and residents in central Mexico are trying to clear up the damage after mudslides left several dozen dead over the weekend. We tried to get out, but we just couldn't. The lights went out, and that's when we didn't know what hit the house. It went down, and I could feel something, that the mud was carrying me. It was on top of me, and I was moving with it on top of me. Tropical Storm Earl hit Mexico at hurricane strength last week, in some areas dumping a month's worth of rain in just 24 hours. The deluge ripped up highways, knocked out power, brought at least two bridges down, and destabilized hills in the states of Puebla and Veracruz, which soaked up the water. While rescuers continued hunting for victims amid the ruins, authorities promised aid as another tropical storm threatened to make landfall. Junto. The federal government, along with state and municipal governments, will face the devastation caused by heavy rains this weekend, along with other damage in the days to come. While somewhat weaker than Earl, Tropical Storm Javier has already sparked evacuations in low-lying areas on the east coast, with local authorities setting up storm shelters in local schools. Heat warnings and advisories were posted in 14 states today. For more on the severe weather, here's Pamela Gardner of WBZ in Boston. Yeah, lots of heat advisories and heat warnings in effect, but we're also keeping a close watch on this nearly stationary area of low pressure that's spinning up tons of Gulf moisture and flooding portions of Louisiana. Last 24 hours, central, southern Louisiana has picked up over 20 inches of rain. This is unprecedented in some spots. An additional rain of four to eight inches is projected through Tuesday across the same locations that have continued to have flood watches and warnings in effect. Well, that low pressure is going to meet up with the cold front draped across the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, producing additional flood concerns there. Summer heat, heat advisory, excessive heat warnings posted through Sunday for the Atlantic coast here. Heat index temperatures right around potentially 105 for tomorrow. Rena, Pamela Garner with the weather outlook. 
In the West, extreme heat combined with thick smoke from wildfires and air pollution from millions of cars is making the air in some places dangerous to breathe. Here's Mireya Villarreal. Back in the 80s, thick, hazy smog was as much a part of the Los Angeles skyline as the Hollywood sign. Today, while L.A. County's air quality has improved, health officials say pollution kills 1,300 people a year, making it the deadliest air in the country. According to a new study, that number is more than triple the number of air pollution-related deaths in New York and twice the total in Texas. Lead author Kevin Cromar. We see that the annual number of excess deaths is quantitatively very similar to the number of deaths from alcohol-related traffic fatalities. In California, heavy traffic, industrial commerce, lack of rain, and wildfires are all to blame. Bad air and, and, and high levels of pollution become deadly to a society because chronically people are ingesting these particulate molecules. Dr. Anthony Cardillo is an ER doctor at Glendale Adventist Medical Center. He says he's seen a rise in patients suffering from pollution, and you don't need to be a medical expert to figure out the solution. If we had tighter restrictions and better control over our air quality, we would see a drop or decline in these acute crises that people have with these underlying chronic conditions. The pollution in California is so bad, federal health standards for the ozone levels have only been met three days out of this entire summer. Experts believe with another heat wave hitting the West Coast and sticking around through the middle of the week, the air quality will continue to get worse. Elaine? Mireya Villarreal, thank you. A massive wildfire is threatening thousands of homes in the mountains of San Bernardino County. Officials say the pilot fire has scorched nearly 7,000 acres. An estimated 5,000 homes are under evacuation orders. Hundreds of firefighters and flight crews have been working since Sunday to contain the blaze. And with dry weather and strong winds in the forecast, it is becoming even more challenging to get the fire under control. We are joined by Jeff Wynn from our Los Angeles station, KCBS. Jeff, firefighters have been battling this since Sunday, as I just said. How much of it is contained at this point? Well, Elena, as you have mentioned, there have been 7,000 acres burned, but the containment level is only 6%, so they have a long way to go. I want to show you why that number is so small. Let me step aside and have Steve Medina, my colleague, push into those hilltops right there. You can see the fire suppressant on those hilltops, but it's very tough and very rugged to get crews in there, so you can't get hand crews in there. So the only thing that they can do right now is water drops, and that is why the containment number is so small, Elaine. Uh, so, Jeff, uh, ha have any buildings or homes been damaged? The good news is that no homes have been damaged, but there is some new fear in this community. The reason for that, people here say that there is at least one case of looting. Uh, what happened is that they say that some folks came uh, to a home early this morning and stole some tools uh, from a yard, and then they have seen reports of people uh, peering through windows late at night with flashlights. So uh, they know that there is uh, an evacuation alert in this area, but a lot of people don't want to leave because they just don't want to be uh, the victim. Of, of, of a break in, Elaine. All right. Jeff Wynn reporting for us. Jeff, thank you so much. Well, they're watching the weather tonight in California, where a roaring wildfire 90 miles north of San Francisco has reduced at least 175 homes and businesses to smoldering rubble. Thousands have been evacuated. Maria Villarreal is there. 
firefighters were no match for the Clayton fire as it tore through the small town of Lower Lake in less than an hour. Sherry Scarborough's home burned to the ground. This is where we all grew up, you know. This is all we've known of basically all our lives. Our whole life and now all of our neighbors, look at, look at what they have to come home to. It's horrible, absolutely horrible. The fire started off slow Saturday afternoon, but by Sunday it exploded, scorching nearly 40% of the downtown area. Over 1,500 uh, homes still remain threatened by this blaze. Cal Fire's Daniel Berlant. What we weren't prepared is that uh, the winds were going to be as strong as they were. When hundreds and hundreds of embers are raining down on homes, if those homes aren't built with construction materials that are going to stand them, it doesn't matter the number of firefighters you have, those homes are still going to be destroyed. Nothing is left of Mark Guyberson's warehouse. The fire took it all, including a 1923 Studebaker and other prized collectibles from Lower Lake's history. What do you do from here? Well, I, I don't know, you know. When I think about everything that was in there, it's, it's just shocking. This was a great building and, and a nice and a great town. The wind picked up a little bit this afternoon, and we are in the middle of a heat wave, which is why firefighters continue to monitor this area for any hot spots. They also tell me, Scott, that they are continuing to look through the rubble, searching for anything that could be salvageable for these homeowners who have lost everything. More on these stories tomorrow on CBS This Morning. Maria Villarreal, thank you. You know, I haven't quite. You know, lost it yet uh, over the whole thing. You know, pretty much my my whole life was inside that building there. It's so beyond tragic. It's just there was no way to save these homes. They all burnt in a row up there. The winery, I guess, burnt. You know, places I've known for many years and knew the people that owned these places. In this particular case, we had everything. We had grass burning, we had vegetation burning, homes, businesses, a fire that moved into downtown Lower Lake. So we had everything. Um, propane tank explosions. And it's really been a combined effort of our forces in the air and on the ground to get this contained and out as quickly as possible. Lonnie Quinn is chief weathercaster at our flagship station in New York, WCBS. Lonnie, why is this happening? Well, the culprit here is a low pressure system that's kind of acting like a paddle wheel and it's sitting right over Louisiana. It's doing nothing but spinning and spinning and pulling in this Gulf moisture and just dumping it on top of Louisiana. And here's the problem. It's like stuck in a traffic jam. It can't move forward. It can't move backwards. There's systems on both sides of it. So it just continues to rain. They've already picked up 10 inches or more in some spots. They'll pick up another four to eight. And some spots you see shaded in yellow could pick up eight to 12 inches of rain. And that same low pressure system is pumping in that hot, moist air all the way up to the northeast. Look at these are the feels like temperatures from earlier today. They're like 113 in Dallas, 105 in Houston. I can hear the audience yelling, when does this end? Uh, that's, uh, that's probably the million dollar question right there. I can only tell you it doesn't look like anytime soon because you've got that traffic jam. Uh, until that leading high pressure system exits, nothing changes. The earliest that happens, I think maybe midweek of next week, maybe not until the end of next week. Wow. Lonnie Quinn, WCBS, thank you so much. Louisiana is under a state of emergency tonight after intense storms dumped as much as three inches of rain an hour. Livingston, Louisiana got 17 inches and it's not over. At least one person is dead. There's more flooding in Mississippi and Alabama. Omar Villafranca is in Amy City, Louisiana. In Tangipaho Parish, Louisiana, rains flooded out businesses and entire neighborhoods. Motorists abandoned their vehicles and homeowners were forced to evacuate. My house is completely flooded and I've never flooded before. Emergency crews went after those who couldn't get out on their own, using boats and high water vehicles to take stranded neighbors and pets to higher ground. Residents chipped in. Where is all this water supposed to go? But in Baton Rouge, the rising floodwaters proved deadly. A 68 year old man was killed after he was swept away while trying to escape. Vernon Drummond was his friend. He got over and he went under, then didn't come back up. 
Several drivers in Amit City teamed up to help an elderly man to safety who was trapped in his car. Jordan Temple got to him first. I just told him, you know, don't panic. I'm here for you. I'm going to get you out these waters. I'm going to rescue you. Since last night, more than 16 inches of rain has fallen, causing several rivers to overflow. Nearly 70 roads have been closed. Officials are warning drivers to stay off the road. 24 people were evacuated from this apartment complex behind me. The good news is the water is receding. At one point, it was waist high. But Scott, there is more rain in the forecast. Omar Villafranca, thanks. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a dramatic rescue in the historic flooding caught on tape. You can see here in the video a car submerged in water. And that's when rescuers jump in. Take a look at the amazing rescue. Give me a knife. Give me a knife. Give me a knife. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Break the window. Oh my God, I'm drowning. We're coming. We're coming. I'm gonna break this window. We're breaking the window. Do you have a knife? Do you have a knife? You you do that. Tell me if you have a knife. I'll find it. As you see there, they were able to rescue the woman and her dog safely from that submerged car. Thousands of people in Louisiana have been displaced from their homes after massive downpours caused historic flooding in the southern part of the state. At least six people have died in the floods. 12,000 people are staying in shelters, and over 40,000 businesses and homes are without power. Some parts of Louisiana saw up to two feet of rain in just 48 hours. This is unprecedented weather for the state. In Lafayette, the average rainfall in the month of August is 4.6 inches. This month, the city has seen more than 20 inches of rain. And in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the average is 5.8 inches a month in August. But this August, it has seen 19 inches. For more on this, let's turn to Dr. Reese Halter, distinguished conservation biologist. Dr. Reese, good to have you with us tonight. Speak to the rarity of this amount of rainfall in an isolated spot. What's, what's, what's happening Good evening, here? Ed. 
Yeah, basically what we saw on Friday was this massive low pressure system. It just parked on top of Louisiana, drawing moisture 85 degrees from the Gulf and the, the epic amounts of rainfall. In some parts, Watson, for instance, received 31 inches, over 31 inches. That's more rainfall in three days than the city of Los Angeles, where I live, has received in almost four years. Now, it's not that that's, that's an, an unimaginable amount of water. This is the second time in four months that Louisiana has been hit with this. This is a climate in crisis. It's overheated from burning fossil fuels, and we've got to have a plan, Ed, to go forward. Okay, so what we've seen in Louisiana is like the model that we're going to see more of this, and this is really, in a sense, in our time, possibly irreversible. In the meantime, the, the yeah. sad thing about all of this is you can just imagine most of these people uh, not on the coast probably don't have flood insurance. There's going to be a big price tag federally to help these folks get reorganized, and there's nothing worse than going through a flood. You lose everything. So, but these isolated incidents, incidents they, they, are we going to see more of these? Yes, we're going to see more. They're piling up, and it's layer upon layer. Look, when you've got almost three feet of water, Ed, first of all, sewage systems become a problem. Second of all, you've got mosquitoes. We've got the threat of Zika, dengue, and chikungunya, and these are real diseases. Mm. And, and a lot of people, Ed, this, it's abject poverty. A lot of people grow their own food. They've just lost their food. They've just lost their homes. And on top of that, millions of animals, wildlife are dead. These, this is the new world. And this is why in November, Hillary and Kane, they've got a plan to future-proof America. There's no way you can say we're going to burn more coal, we're going to burn more fracking as, uh, as Trump uh, is, is intending to do. That is a disaster. It's an epic disaster, not just for Louisiana. It's a disaster for America and the world. Okay, Dr. Reese Halter with us tonight. Reese, thanks so much for joining us on this.